As much as the writers love telling you about horrible things that happened in the past, sometimes they like to explore more recent events. New discoveries are made every day, and most of them provide convincing evidence for the hopeless nature of our existence. But there is no point in being depressed about it. Why is that, you ask? Well, if your existence is pointless, then your feelings are meaningless as well. So enjoy yourself. Or don't. It just doesn't matter. But here's the good news. With that little nugget of existential dread planted into your brain, all of our normally depressing stories might now seem uplifting. Just kidding. Let's start with the cheerful story of the first animal to go extinct in 2020. The Chinese Academy of Fishery Sciences in Wuhan, China, recently reported that the Chinese paddlefish no longer exists. It most likely went extinct sometime between 2005 and 2010. Although it went extinct in the past, the timing of this announcement makes the paddlefish the first official extinction event documented in the year 2020. And when they say it's gone, they mean it's really gone forever. There are no members of the species in captivity, and nobody kept any tissue samples either. Every last cell that ever existed of this species is most likely gone. The paddlefish was one of the largest freshwater fish, when it was still around. Larger specimens could reach lengths of 23 feet. They were regularly caught in the Yangtze River until the late 1970s. The reason the species went into decline is because a dam was built on the river. It split the paddlefish population in two, preventing one half from returning to their spawning grounds. The fish was listed as endangered in 1989, but nothing was done. The last time anybody saw one alive was 2003. The scientists uh, placed nets over various rivers throughout China and documented the species that were caught. That's how they concluded the paddlefish must be extinct. Researchers hope this will provide motivation to act before other species become extinct. Several, such as the Chinese alligator, are endangered and could disappear soon. We certainly hope China saves its endangered animals. Hopefully, their conservation efforts are more successful than their virus containment strategies. Speaking of violence and political unrest, what if someone was able to predict when these events might happen? Would it make a difference? A mathematician in 2012 might have done just that. And, spoiler alert, it didn't make a difference at all. In 2012, mathematician Peter Turchin predicted that the United States would see a lot of violence in 2020. He analyzed riots, lynching, terrorism, and other forms of political violence from the years 1780 to 2010. Turchin found two patterns from the results of his research. The first was a longer pattern that played out over a 200 to 300 year time frame and consisted of a long period of peace, followed by increasingly violent events. The other was a cycle that appeared to happen every 50 years, where there was peace followed by violence. He found this matched with the years 1870, 1920, and 1970, which were years where violence peaked. Given this pattern, 2020 seemed to be when the next peak should occur. Peter Turchin has suggested that the 50-year cycle is no coincidence. The period of peace is usually about 20 to 30 years, which is about how long it takes for the next generation to become adults. The problems that plagued the previous generation return, and the cycle begins anew. Basically, the lessons the previous generation learned through violence are completely ignored by the next generation, and it happens all over again. Critics of Turchin's analysis have claimed that 230 years of U.S. history isn't enough to draw conclusions about repeating patterns. Also, one of the years that should fit Turchin's pattern is 1820, but that year didn't have any serious upheavals. Turchin's opinion is 2020 is going to get worse before it gets better. The Bad Things in History writers think Peter Turchin is a lot like Nostradamus. He can tell you what's going to happen, but not in enough detail that you can do anything about it. And it might not happen anyway. If you want predictions to make a difference, it helps to be more specific. It also helps if you have watched our previous episodes, because it's time for a history quiz. Jefferson Davis was the president of the Confederate States of America. Which former United States president considered Davis to be a great friend? Was it Warren Harding? Perhaps Abraham Lincoln? 
What about Franklin Pierce? The correct answer is Franklin Pierce. Pierce left office a few years before the Civil War began. During the war, he frequently spoke against Lincoln. When the Confederacy was defeated and Jefferson Davis was captured, they also found numerous letters from Pierce. It turned out the two were great friends. If you want to learn more presidential facts, we suggest you watch our previous episode, The Top 5 Worst Presidents. Have you had enough bad news yet? I hope not, because there's more to come. Surely you have heard enough about the ongoing pandemic. But what about the other virus that is spreading? In 2014, a strange illness that resembled polio appeared. It is called acute flaccid myelitis, or AFM for short. It spiked in the summer and fall of 2014, 2016, and 2018. Health officials expect another outbreak in 2020. Yay! The most likely cause, or so the CDC thinks, is an enterovirus. The viruses that cause polio also belong to this group. The specific strain causing recent illnesses was first identified in California in 1962. Children are most often infected and the symptoms are mild to severe respiratory illness. CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield said recent social distancing measures that are in place might stop the spread of this disease. Then he confessed that really he doesn't know. So basically, now you have one more thing to worry about. You know what's worse than a deadly virus? Cancer. And guess what can cause cancer? That's right, viruses. In a previous Disturbing Discoveries episode, we discussed how samples of the Epstein-Barr virus, which causes mono, were found in ancient chewing gum. Well, it turns out the fun doesn't stop there. The Epstein-Barr virus is actually a type of herpes virus. It can apparently latch onto genetic material in infected cells and turn on genes that cause cancer. The good news is that only 1.5% of people infected with the virus will develop cancer. Those unlucky few can develop cancer of the nose or throat, lymphoma, and stomach cancer. Just in case you're curious, here are a few other things that can cause cancer. Hot tea. Being sedentary. Being tall. Inhaling smoke from a grill. Breast implants. Alcohol. Obesity. Is a cancer-free life a life worth living? Only you can decide. Humanity is really good at killing animals. They are disappearing so fast we'll probably all be living off kale in the near future. But sometimes animals strike back. We covered bear attacks in a previous episode, and those are not really unexpected. If you see a bear, then being eaten is a definite possibility. But you rarely hear about whales attacking people. In Western Australia, a group of snorkelers went on a whale watching tour. It was a guided tour where they entered the water to observe humpback whales. A mother and her calf were swimming by the group and apparently the mother whale became very annoyed. The 50 foot long animal swam directly at the snorkelers and was flipping her tail back and forth. One unlucky woman was hit by the tail which broke her ribs and caused internal bleeding. Another woman was hit by the smaller pectoral fin, which tore her hamstring. Nobody died, probably because the whale wasn't really angry. These chartered tours are part of a trial program in Australia that's been going on for the past seven years. Normally, swimmers are not allowed within 330 feet of whales. For some reason, tourists in the chartered tour are exempt from this. If people want to sacrifice themselves to angry whales, who are we to complain? As we fight numerous diseases making their way around the world this year, there is no shortage of bad ideas. But that doesn't stop scientists from testing whether bad ideas really are bad. Ten years ago, researchers took sediment samples from the ocean floor. They first reached 20,000 feet down into the Pacific Ocean, then drilled another 300 feet below that. The sample was from a region of the Pacific Ocean that is known to have very few nutrients and low oxygen. Researchers wanted to find out how microbes survived at all. They found microbes in the sediment that were deposited 101 million years ago. 
Next, they wanted to know if the cells would come back to life if given nutrients. To try and make sure contamination wasn't an issue, the sediment was opened in a sterile environment. Nutrients were also given directly to the microbes with a tiny tube to make sure nothing else got in. Imagine their surprise when 99% of the microbes came back to life. The amount of them in the sediment quadrupled in just 68 days. We trust the scientists not to unleash a plague from the distant past upon us. How about you? Whether it's viruses, predictions of violence, angry whales, or ancient death waiting to be released, there is no shortage of new discoveries. No matter how bad things are, scientists from around the world stand ready to let us know how much worse it can get. What else will go wrong this year? We certainly don't know. If we were good at predictions, we wouldn't keep making content about the past. But whatever bad things do happen, we will gladly tell you about it. After the fact, of course. If you enjoyed this episode, then please like the video and subscribe to our channel for more. Thank you for watching Bad Things in History.